Good evening and welcome to the Daily News Roundup. I am Abigail Smythe. Coming up in this evening's newscast, four people arrested for early morning carjacking. Broadcasting Commission bans music promoting illegal activities. Confrontation between two cabbies leaves one dead. Dean of Discipline calls for help from security forces to respond to criminal gangs in schools. In business, IMF says the worst is yet to come for the global economy. In the region, Barbados welcomes over 100 nurses from Ghana. Further overseas, NATO officials say Russian nuclear strike could trigger response from Ukrainian allies. And in sports, Shelley and Fraser Price and Sharika Jackson shortlisted for Female Athlete of the Year. We begin on the local scene. A woman is among four people arrested following a carjacking in the Six Miles area of St. Andrew Wednesday morning. Reports are that sometime after six, a female motorist and members of her family were traveling in a Honda Fit motor car when they were stopped by gunmen. Superintendent Hopeton Nicholson, attached to the St. Catherine South Police Division, says the woman was instructed to exit the car while two other members of her family were forcefully removed from the vehicle. The men then sped off, but the police were able to quickly intercept them with assistance from the Jamaica Eye Surveillance System. The driver of the vehicle attempted to evade the cops but crashed into a railing in the vicinity of the New Haven community. Superintendent Nicholson disclosed that two of the people arrested were recently released from police custody and are believed to be linked to a criminal gang. All music that promotes or glorifies illegal activities are now banned from television and radio. That includes all songs promoting scamming, chopping, banging the line, tall clips, rolling with guns, etc. The Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica, BCJ, has issued a strong directive to broadcasters requiring them to take immediate steps to prevent the transmission of any recorded material that promotes or glorifies illegal activity. In a release on Tuesday, the BCJ said there should be an immediate end to the playing of any audio or video recording, live song or speech which promotes or glorifies scamming and illegal use or abuse of drugs such as molly. The directive comes as the country continues to grapple with emerging trends of substance abuse and scamming by teenagers. Recently, the Ministry of Health and Wellness revealed through a rapid assessment of substance use among high school children that the ecstasy drug Molly is emerging as one of the most popular drugs being used by teenagers. The BCJ is also banning the playing of any material that promotes or glorifies illegal or harmful use of guns or other offensive weapons, jungle justice, or any other form of illegal or criminal activity. Any edited song which directly or indirectly promotes same is now strictly prohibited. This includes live and original edits as well as the use of near-sounding words or substitutes for offensive lyrics, expletives or profanities. The BCJ says the directive reinforces the Commission's commitment to keep the airwaves free of harmful content given the important role traditional media still plays as agents of socialization. It says the use of the public airwaves to broadcast songs that promote or glorify illegal activities could give the wrong impression that criminality is an accepted feature of Jamaican culture and society. In the meantime, entertainment stakeholders have reacted to the announced ban. They are not pleased. Music producer Duane Fire Wayne Cowens believes the ban will not be effective as there are various other platforms which people are using to access music. He cited YouTube, Spotify, Audio Mac, Mixtapes and Dances as alternative sources for the music that will be prohibited from radio and TV.
He reasoned that it will be up to the parents or up to the individual to know what they are listening to and know how it's going to affect them individually. Producer Not Nice is calling the move a waste of time. Producer Ramesh says while he does not agree with glorifying guns or the use of drugs, artists should not be curtailed from singing about what they see around them. Russian, who is known for several productions with popular entertainer Vibes Cartel, laments that he does not depend on radio for airplay. Recording artist Tanya Stevenson says the ban is an archaic measure. Police are probing the murder of a man who was shot during a robbery in Comfort near Royal Flat in Manchester Tuesday night. The deceased has been identified as 49-year-old Teddy Coley, a resident of Weber's district in Comfort. Police reports are that about 9 p.m. Coley was walking home from work when he was held up, robbed of his belongings and shot by his attacker. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Statistics from the police show that up to October 1, Manchester recorded 44 murders since the start of the year when compared to 19 for the corresponding period last year. And two cabbies left residents of Grand Spend St. Andrew scampering for cover on Tuesday after engaging in a shootout that left one dead and another on the run. Dead is 28-year-old Travardo Shortman Patterson of a Derrick Lane address. Reports are that about 11 a.m., Patterson and the other taxi driver were at a car wash along Dulwich Drive when a dispute developed between the two. This further escalated when Patterson reportedly pulled a firearm. Alleged eyewitnesses say the other taxi driver also drew his weapon and shot Patterson repeatedly before taking away Patterson's weapon and making good his escape. Patterson died on the scene. Donique Smith, the mother of Patterson's child, said though they have been separated, she is hurt but not surprised at how he met his demise. She said he was a stubborn individual who listened to no one and would often be in confrontation with others. She added that, quote, a mix-up in a too much things, end quote, but she tried to steer him along the right path. A man is now in police custody following the murder of a man and the injury of his girlfriend in Discover Bay St. Anne on Tuesday. Sometime after 8 a.m., the suspect, who is the ex-lover of the woman, found her in the company of Kendrick Dixon at Lidford Close in the Bel Air housing scheme. The suspect used the machete to chop both of them. He tried to escape but was caught by residents and handed over to the police. Dixon and his girlfriend were taken to hospital where Dixon was pronounced dead. Five alleged members of the Clarendon-based Bloods gang will face the court again on January 11, 2023. They were remanded on Tuesday after their plea and case management hearing failed to start in the home circuit court. Abigail Heidel, George Robinson, Travis Hardy, Franklin Miller, and Alex Miller are charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm, and robbery with aggravation. A sixth defendant, Stephen Williams, was also implicated in the matter, but he has been presumed dead by the police after being reported missing last August. The court is currently awaiting documents of proof. On Tuesday, when the defendants appeared in court remotely, with Hardy and Miller being unrepresented, the case management hearing could not proceed. Justice Vinet Graham Allen, as a result, instructed that both defendants be assigned legal aid lawyers. 64-year-old Alex Miller was being represented by King's counsel, Tom Tavares Finson, but the senior counsel had written to the court indicating that he wishes to withdraw from the case as the family is unable to pay the full fee. The Bloods gang, which operated in Southern Clarendon, is alleged to have been engaged in extortion and multiple contract killings. Two alleged members of the gang this year pleaded guilty to several charges, including murder, and were sentenced to life in prison. 18-year-old Michael Black, who pleaded guilty to two counts of murder, two counts of illegal possession of firearm, and three counts of robbery with aggravation, is to serve 20 years and three months before he is eligible for parole. 
The other convict, Travis Gilman, pleaded guilty to a range of serious crimes, including three murders, and was sentenced to a total of 210 years in prison. However, he will be considered for parole after serving 25 years as his sentences are to run concurrently. Gilman's role in the gang allegedly included hiring gunmen, purchasing guns for them, transporting them to commit murders, and ensuring that the hitmen were paid for their services. And this story that I'm about to read may be too graphic for some individuals, so therefore discretion is advised. A 12-year-old girl and her 15-year-old sister are recovering in hospital after they were raped, stabbed, and chopped multiple times in a pre-dawn attack at their home just over a week ago. The accused man, who remains at large, is believed to be in his 30s and reportedly has a violent history and is said to be well-known in the community. Please note that the name of the community is being withheld to protect the victim's identities. The suspect's relatives have also reportedly removed themselves from the area out of fear of reprisal. Other female residents of the area are now living in fear. The incident reportedly occurred sometime after 5 a.m. on September 30 as the girls were asleep at home, to which they had relocated after their mother was killed execution style a few years ago. The girls were in the care and custody of their 23-year-old sister. The suspect reportedly removed the window blades to gain entry to the dwelling. The 23-year-old says the younger sister has a tube in her chest for punctured lungs. She was stabbed multiple times, reportedly with a screwdriver, and also chopped in the head and on her hands. She now doesn't even want to be tended to by male doctors. The other sister was reportedly chopped twice in the head and received 15 stitches to her head and 20 stitches to her face. She also received chop wounds to her hands. The girl's aunt says when discharged from hospital, the girls will be relocated from the area. Up to October 1, some 303 rapes had been reported across the island for this year, a 13% decline from the 349 recorded for the corresponding period in 2021. Three constables and a corporal were interdicted following investigations into the escape of murder accused Orville Purnell from the Kingston Central Lockup last year. Head of the JCF's Corporate Communications Unit, Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, who gave the update, said the JCF members will face a disciplinary hearing. Last December, Purnell escaped police lockup while awaiting extradition to St. Lucia to answer to a murder charge. SSP Lindsay noted that based on the report, Purnell did not escape by cutting through prison bars. Findings from the investigation revealed that there were breaches in the standard procedures at the lockup. She says so far there's no evidence of bribery. In the meantime, SSP Lindsay says going forward, the constabulary will aim to update the public on matters concerning escapes from police lockups more frequently. She says it's not the usual case for the unit to frequently publish reports or updates on jailbreaks. However, she says the matter will be taken into consideration. One Dean of Discipline is calling for increased partnership between security forces and education administrators to respond to criminal gangs in schools. This follows news that some boys in grades 10 and 11 at a high school in the corporate area have formed gangs and are taking knives and guns to school. President of the National Association of Deans of Discipline, Samuel Smalling, says his members are trained by the police to identify students who may be involved in gangs. He believes that it would be useful to extend this training to teachers and principals. Mr. Smalling highlights graffiti on walls as a serious sign that students are in a gang. He says, however, that school administrators would not be able to identify this because they are not trained. He adds that other signs include the way students dress, the type of shoes, hairstyle, or whether they wear tight pants. Mr. Smalling says the security forces can help to provide this training and help stem violence in schools. 
The Dean of Discipline also wants a specialized facility to be constructed for students who have been expelled due to crime and violence. He says one such facility should be set up in every region of the country so students who are expelled can can continue rather their education but in a confined context and in business the international monetary fund imf has downgraded its outlook for the world economy for 2023 it cited a long list of threats that include russia's war against ukraine chronic inflation pressures punishing interest rates and the lingering consequences of the global pandemic the 190-country lending agency forecast on Tuesday that the global economy would see growth of just 2.7% next year, down from the 2.9% it had estimated in July. The IMF did not change its forecast for international growth this year, a modest 3.2%, a sharp deceleration from last year's 6% expansion. In the region, Barbados has welcomed 122 nurses from Ghana. They arrived in the island on Monday. The nurses are expected to improve the current shortage on the island. Of the new arrivals, 66 will be sent to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and 56 will be dispersed among the polyclinics and the geriatric hospital. And in Haiti, the country has recorded 32 confirmed cholera cases with 224 suspected cases. The authorities have also indicated that the figures do not represent the situation of the entire country due to travel difficulties and insecurity, given that there are areas controlled by gangs. And further overseas, according to a press officer, a senior NATO official said a Russian nuclear strike would almost certainly trigger a physical response from Ukrainian allies and potentially from NATO. Speaking to media representatives in Brussels, the senior NATO official warned that any use of nuclear weapons by Moscow would have unprecedented consequences for Russia. The official went on to say that Moscow was using its nuclear threats mainly to deter the alliance and other countries from directly entering its war on Ukraine. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden, who warned last week the risk of nuclear Armageddon, said in an exclusive CNN interview on Tuesday that threats emanating from Russia could result in catastrophic mistakes and miscalculations, even as he declined to spell out how precisely the United States would respond if Putin deploys a tactical nuclear device on the battlefield in Ukraine. And in sports, a five-time world 100-meter champion, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price, and the fastest woman alive over 200 meters, Sharika Jackson, have been shortlisted for the 2022 World Athletics Female Athlete of the Year. Fraser Price, who was crowned Female Athlete of the Year in 2013, is fresh off a record-breaking season, having won her fifth World 100-meter title in Eugene, Oregon, while clocking 7 sub 10.7 seconds, the most by any woman in the history of the sport. The 35-year-old also recorded the fastest time in the world this year of 10.62 seconds in the Monaco Diamond League in August. The 10th time world champion also claimed her fifth Diamond League title in September. Meanwhile, her compatriot Sharika Jackson can also boast a stellar season as she etched her name in the history books when she stormed to 21.45 seconds to win the 200 meter at the 2022 Oregon World Championships. She became the fastest woman alive and the second fastest woman in the history of the event while setting a new lifetime best championship record, national record and world leading time. She has now copped world championship medals in the 100, 200 and 400 meters. Additionally, Jackson was also crowned Diamond League champion in Switzerland when she demolished a stellar field to claim her first title in the 200 meters. Voting lines will be closed on October 31 when five finalists will be named and the World Athletics Female Athlete of the Year will be crowned in December. And in international football, Tuesday's UEFA Champions League games results are as follows. 
FC Copenhagen and Manchester City drew nil all. Chelsea beat AC Milan 2 nil. Paris Saint Germain drew 1 1 with Benfica, while Shakhtar Donetsk also drew 1 1 with Real Madrid. And that's it for your news roundup for today. I am Abigail Smythe. See you next time. <music>